We are the Women of Women Matters, and this will be our last session in this year, this remarkable year 2020. And before we find out what we will be talking about, uh, we do a short check-in. And I would like to start with Austria. <laughs> I guess that's me. Um, yeah, my husband just informed me that today is the International Orgasm Day. So I, <laughs> <laughs> he made that okay, up. <laughs> okay. What's an orgasm? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm fine. And I'm just in between worlds somehow. And today is obviously the famous day when the age of Aquarius will start. Let's see. Harmony and understanding. Mm. Yeah, the weather is fine. It's getting warmer for Christmas. And yeah, we, our, our plans are to reduce because we, will, we would be 14 for Christmas Eve. So we are just celebrating with our younger daughter and the others are close by. So we see them anyway and exchange gifts. Or, yeah. Of course, the grandchildren are sad, but I'd rather, yeah, somehow I feel fine. Uh, less stress just sitting and reading. <laughs> okay, I pass it on to Germany. Nearby, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's um, like reducing activities and and uh, house care, <laughs> cleaning and and decorating a little bit. And the girls are coming tomorrow they did kind of a quarantine before tested and so it's it's fine i think but um yeah i'm i'm a lot meditating so um sometimes i wake up in the middle of the night and then <laughs> sometimes for a few hours this is the state i'm in often and uh it's good it's healing, it's, uh, yeah, so we will have, normally we, we meet the 26th with the whole siblings and everybody at my parents' house that my brother took, and this time we just Zoom it, <laughs> yeah, so. And we will have a new niece in January, maybe before we meet again. <laughs> so it's it's so we are expecting, so to say, an expecting family all together. Yeah. I go all the way down to South Africa. I'm here in South Africa, Johannesburg, and we have very interesting weather. The one day it's hot and the next day it's cold. You know, I might think I'm in Europe. So it's been interesting the last two weeks with this ch these changes. Um, I myself have also really gone into a um, more state of being, slowing down, and just being very curious about what will emerge in the coming seasons and also a bit excited as well. Almost feel like a mother giving birth to something. So, so I'm excited about that. And I'm passing on to Christine. Um, good morning from Carlsbad, California. Um, Today is the first day of my two week vacation over the holidays. Um, Tom and I always kind of take this 
uh, time off because we found that uh, people will schedule their appointments to see us, but they don't keep their appointments to see us. So we have found it's better just to take the time off and uh, give ourselves some, uh, some enjoyable time. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I feel cheerful today. Um, I think with COVID, things are really less stressful. Um, if I think about the world at large, it is more stressful, certainly. Um, but in terms of just my own small world, it is less stressful. I'm not trying to plan gatherings. I've, you know, I can, if I have five minutes or 10 minutes in my house free, I can actually get something done, uh, write some Christmas uh, cards or something. So really I'm ahead of the game. Everything is pretty much done for Christmas, except for wrapping some presents. And um, so that part's been nice. Uh, it just seems a little less frantic uh, this year, even though I try every year not to be stressed by the holidays, um, somehow it always gets there. So um, I'm enjoying that aspect. Uh, it's great. And looking forward to the year changing and uh, hopefully better things ahead. So I will pass it on to the other Californian, Victoria. Um, I'm slightly discombobulated. I um, just woke up, so I'm not really um, articulate yet. You look like you've been up for hours, Christine. <laughs> you really are prepared for Christmas. <laughs> I like your, your mug and your vest, you're totally set up. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of in a between time, I guess. And um, I won't emphasize it too much, but I'm struggling with the fact that Beatrice and I have decided not to travel in either direction to be together for Christmas. So since she is my one and only existential purpose and um, she hates it when I say that. And also my only family now, um, now that my mother's gone, it's it's hard. So I put up a tree, it, luckily before, I, before we made that decision, <laughs> I don't think I would have done it otherwise. So I sort of have a Christmas um, spirit here trying to, trying to sort of rise up and encourage everybody. Oh, and there's nobody here to be encouraged. Okay, well, I, I just woke up. So um, thank you, Christine, for your faith, but I will now um, pass it on. Let's see, everyone's spoken except Heidi and Beatrice. I guess I better pass it on to Beatrice since I had to pass on my unfortunate genes to her in her DNA. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, Victoria, can you say something about the concert? or the memorial, the- Beethoven. Beethoven. I'll let Beatrice do that. Oh, well, as per usual, um, everything came together at the last minute and was fabulous. So that's what I'll say about the Beethoven. Um, my mother is fabulous at everything she does. Um, and I helped her put together the presentation um, and yeah, I think I hope I hope she can do it again uh, because there was it was a lot of fun um, and I think there's more things that can be done with it too, which will be fun. Um, she's been getting emails and emails and emails of positive feedback. That's what, at least that's what I hear <laughs> when we talk on the phone. <laughs> um, I'm I'm here in Brooklyn. Um, I decided to sit in front of one of my little trees today to to bring a little festive cheer. Um, I also set up some Christmas decorations uh, earlier in the month because I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. And I decided that I might as well have a little bit of Christmas cheer even if I do get to go home. So I'm glad I did that as well. Um, yeah, we have not been separated since I was born for Christmas. So <laughs> that's hard. Um, we're figuring out how to do some stuff on Zoom and maybe we'll cook the same recipe together and maybe we'll do other things like that, listen to music together and have a have a fun time, but um, it's gonna be hard. 
And what else? I, I'm hosting another event with Reimagine on Wednesday, so I can't really relax yet, which is frustrating because I'm quite exhausted from the year and really want to take a break, but I've put a little bit of work things on my plate for this week, so I need to keep <laughs> going for a couple more days, um, and then I can actually let go and unwind and relax and have some time off, which I very much need. So um, that's it for now. I, I guess Heidi, I don't know who, I came a little yes. late. I think Heidi's next. Yes, I'm the last one. And I just noticed that my fire is out. So in a short time, I have to get up and put some wood in. I uh, switch, switched it on. I mean, you cannot switch on the fire, but I put it on only at about three o'clock because during the day, when you move outside, it's warm enough. And we even ate uh, lunch outside in the sun, and it was fine. But then inside, when you sit with 14, 15 centigrades, um, it's not so really my, my taste. Altogether, I'm very busy in getting more informed from all parts about this COVID thing, about the politics and the things which are there behind. I don't know if I shared with you, there was a a research done from, and there was a Senate hearing in uh, America about um, a, a drug which is called ivermectin, which has been used uh, for 40 years in another context in uh, parasites uh, in Africa and everywhere. And it's very, oh, Hanali, maybe you know about that. Um, men in, was lost a lot used in Africa for you know, for the um, inner um, parasites of people. And they did a huge study in, in South America, huge study and several studies. And one, for instance, was they had 800 healthcare uh, workers in, who are in contact with COVID who took the, the medication and you need to do it, you take it only twice or something like that. I have the regime. Uh, and then they had 400 who didn't take it. And who, who took it, nobody got ill. And from the others, 50% got ill. So that seems to be a sort of a wonder drug, which is really safe because it is used, has been used for 40 years. And now it's the question if it comes out into public, because it, you can take it as prevention, but also during um, the the, the illness and these doctors, it's a, a eight or non, I don't know, the frontline COVID critical care alliance, it is called. And uh, they hope that it will be peer reviewed very soon, their paper, and that then uh, this can be used. And so I decided to order it. I don't have it yet, but I will take it and then be at least this little fear which is still left. I will be uh, uh, getting rid of the fear. Um, yeah, and these things I'm researching and all these things, which is possible, what, what are this, uh, the findings and, and so on. And this is one thing. And the other thing, as I said to Monia again uh, before, I have done the ULAP uh, this year from Otto Sharma, no? and I have applied for the consequence one, the second one. And I plan to do with other two women to create a space where we are sort of offering medi me me mediation, trying to find people who are really on different positions and trying to bring them together and to, to mediate the positions. Because I see that there is so much, you know, people, reasonable people get counseled and there's so much ideology on both sides, I would say. And I would really like to do something uh, to bring people together because the divide is also in the family, also in my family, you know, so trying to find a way to communicate. So that's what I'm up to. And so I'm not, yeah, I do. I'm relaxing in some way. I'm going to the vegetable garden and dig and take off the, the weeds and stuff and be in the sun. But I'm very much occupied in 
preparing these things and getting as much information myself as as possible. So that's me. But maybe it's already the topic for today. What did we do? <laughs> How did we live this year? And what do we think to to want to do next year and to be next year? Whatever you want to share in this regard, I invite you. And I go and put some wood on the stove in the meantime. But I hear uh, you. Heidi, can you put down the name of the drug in the chat? Yes, please. Yes. OK. Uh, could we do two, uh, my suggestion, could we do two rounds? Like, what do I celebrate about the year, the past year? And the second to go, like, we have our last call in 21. And what do I share then? <laughs> Something like that. What has happened from that perspective? I just, I thought that could be fun to do that. Uh, you Gertraud, really need me to, to begin? No. Gertraud, no, why don't you start? <laughs> exactly. I'm back in a minute. I just wrote down. But When I say celebrate, it doesn't mean that we can only say positive things. <laughs> it's just to acknowledge last year. Um, I would like to have a minute of silence to, to ponder on in that. Yeah, last year was kind of a healing year. It doesn't sound, <laughs> so it's, it's more like uh, in my business to overcome that split and to just to re-adjust to what's really going on and what we really, who am I and who are we? And, um, and it was a quiet year because um, my husband had a very low year because he's an event photographer, which was not the right <laughs> thing to be in this year. Um, yeah, and, and, and at the end, I'm, I'm very much into healing healing you know, on all levels at the moment I'm visit I'm watching the the earth keepers summit and um, we had a pretty or we still have a pretty tough healing um, health condition in the family so I'm I'm just bringing all this the knowledge together and um, yeah, wonderful coaching. I'm, I'm, it is as if my 
the frequency of my life has just lowered altogether, which at some times was uh, concerning and at some times it's really wonderful to, to, to come more, be more centered and more calm than many years before. Yeah, I don't have to get anywhere <laughs> at the moment, yeah. Yeah, and the connection to our girls was not so much in person and over Zoom, but we had family conversations and before we just had one-on-one -on -one phone calls and this was a new quality to more family quality time. Yeah, tomorrow they come. So... Not all of them, the one living in Austria, there is no way, <laughs> but the other two. There's not much more in my head right now to tell. So I hand over to Monia. Well. For me, this has been a year of letting go. And it just came to me one couple of nights ago that maybe just getting very close to somebody is nothing but an exercise in letting, having to let go before you die, could be. Uh, I celebrate in this year that the women field, the internet, the Zoom, con the Zoom meetings, because without them, something would be missing. So I definitely want to thank Heidi again for providing room for us and for this possibility and for all the different kind of women who now join also or ask me if they could join. And this is a great thing. Well, now being 79, I all of a sudden got better walking. Uh, I did some physios, but then I, I really felt stiff. And, and, and then uh, now <laughs> to the lockdown, I didn't go. And all of a sudden I felt better. I slept a lot and obviously I'm relaxing more my body. Um, and yesterday I went for a walk with my older daughter who lives just a block away and she is a health fanatic. She wants to walk every day as much as she can. And I really was surprised that, uh, yeah, walking was much easier than about half a year ago. And <laughs> she, she's so different from me. Maybe that's the genes of my husband. I don't know, <laughs> I guess Victoria said to pass all the genes. She's extremely communicative and she talks to everybody. She beats when she walks the dog, of course. And she bought a, <laughs> a, suit, a coat matching the dog, which is a labradoodle. <laughs> I just looked at her, it would never come to my mind to do that. But he says, everybody who has a labradoodle now buys these coats. Okay, okay. <laughs> and the dog, she is now five years old and she's getting an, becoming an old lady. And she's so uh, anxious and so uh, afraid of everything. We met a, a huge white dog and she didn't want to go in the direction and she pulled us into the other direction. So she is really, yeah, I, definitely, I wasn't aware that she is not a really fierce dog. She is very much uh, a timid dog. and But she's about the size up to my knees. But she is just... And I'm wondering, because whenever she sees me, she's so excited. And then sort of when we walked for about 
half an hour, she forgot about me and there was so much to sniff about and to find. And uh, so I was really thinking how a dog uh, sees her surrounding. Uh, and even that dog she was so much afraid of, she sniffed where he had been very, very, very carefully. So what would her awareness be like? And that was just, uh, I've never done that before, that intensively. Um, yeah. And I went, because I did so much reading, I went into areas I haven't been before, like how the 70s worked on the minds of people. And I got extensive literature on that. And that is quite, quite interesting. But I wouldn't want to repeat it. It's not my, my kind of, of getting close to what is. I'd rather meditate. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't meditate for two hours every day as Harari does. And some of our male friends, they just, this is now what they intend to do, meditating every day, two hours. Okay, that's fine if they want to. Um, I wouldn't, I just, yeah, I, I, I'm more connected to people now uh, in the virtual way, um, which is quite interesting how different people are and getting sent all these beautiful photographs and video clips and some of them I just think, oh my goodness, how doesn't she notice what she's doing? But on the other hand, it's fine. It's it's people are so different, and uh, I've I've come to accept that, uh, and letting everybody be the way he can be, and not expecting anything miraculous from them anymore. Uh, Gertrude said her. Uh, Did you see your frequency went down? Yeah. My frequency elongated like this. It's not, she didn't, it didn't go down, but it's, yeah, it's like these sinus curves. Not that yet. <laughs> no, just slow sinus curves. And I'm, hesitant what I would do in the second round, what I would celebrate in 2021. I haven't even thought about that yet. Okay, that's so far as I'm going. And I pass on to Christine. Um, let's see. I have been uh, getting back into reading some uh, Father Richard Rohr. I committed with another uh, another woman and a guy to do a presentation at San Diego Integral, and we're preparing this for the Easter season and looking at integral ways of understanding um, some Christian messages and uh, kind of taking them apart. And, and uh, Richard Rohr is excellent at that. He takes the myths um, and the dogma of organized religion and, and puts it in an integral sense. And uh, to me, it makes a lot of sense to me. So it's very helpful, especially at times like Christmas. I, I don't want to step on anybody's uh, faith or religious beliefs, but, you know, virgin birth and all kinds of things that uh, I was taught, you have to believe this. Um, and now I've always struggled and, and now, uh, you know, integral is a way of understanding um, those ideas in a less concrete way and represent them in a way that feels more real to me and more true to my heart as well as my head, but, but certainly my heart 
So um, I'm thankful uh, to have that available. Um, so doing some of that and that feels good. Uh, that feels really good. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, just checking in with people a little bit more, you know, my friends and family, just to see how everybody's doing during this time, because I think people have a very wide range of uh, reactions when something like Christmas comes up, it, it raises a lot of uh, feelings anyway for people, positive or negative. Uh, and so I guess I'm just spending some time finding out how people are doing and, uh, have friends who have gone through divorces and serious illnesses and moving and buying homes and a variety of things. And uh, it's it's been good to kind of see where they're at with all of that. Um, and my own family, we're, we're doing well, um, trying to take care of each other uh, and enjoy being together as opposed to getting on each other's nerves <laughs> We have a big enough house that we can separate into various rooms if we need to, if uh, we're annoying one another. That seems to work fine. So um, trying to think if there's anything else. I guess that's what I've been up to lately. Um, we've had really nice weather so far. The rain has not started. Um, that's kind of bad news in terms of we always need rain, uh, always need rain, but um, it's, been, it's been lovely to be able to go out and enjoy the weather. Um, and that'll probably stop uh, one of these weeks where the rains will start again. So um, Heidi, I'll pass off to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, for me, this year was very interesting because at the beginning, I was really, you know, I didn't know anything about what was going on as probably everybody of us. And so I fell into this fear. We had this super strict lockdown, which by the way, we have now again for Christmas. We can move from our small place, 30 kilometers, we can move, not more. And we can come together only in four for Christmas. So it's really, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. But um, at the beginning, I believed that it's all all right and it's needed. And then I also sort of enjoyed the quietness because with everything locked down, there were no airplanes, there were no noises from the streets. And I thought, oh living in the countryside and having all this background noise all the time, you know, and then you feel, ah, this is real countryside when you don't hear all this stuff. And I really enjoyed that part. And then, you know, I started to, to get deeper into trying to understand what, it's go what is going on. And you can call it going down the rabbit hole, but all together, I found out a lot of stuff and I listened to many people of different kinds and I stopped actually almost completely listening to the mainstream news because it seems often so absurd to me. And um, I feel it is a similar feeling after I have uh, read the book from Dr. Judy Wood about 9-11, which is called Where Did the Towers Go? That was two weeks of reading which was devastating and Monia they asked me why why do you do that and I said you know also it's devastating but I feel better when I know the truth and the same uh, moment I, I feel now I want to know what is behind at least as far as I can and I also allow myself to take a stand today and when I have more information to change my 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 position uh, according to the information and so i feel that i'm getting ever more clearer and understand more and this is this is good and out of that comes the the desire to do something active to not going to demonstrations or stuff like this but to do something to as i said before to help people to 
to come together instead of getting ever more separated and ever more polarized. I don't know yet how it will work, but um, that's my desire at the moment. Continue maybe in, uh, during also the interviews, Victoria, we can talk about Beethoven, uh, for instance, and I love to do these things, but I feel that's not anymore enough. I feel I'm not doing enough. I, I think doing these meetings like with you and the German groups, that's important too. But I think still it's for me, I have the feeling I have to do something more to create understanding to, 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 to. I'm a Enya type four, which means in one way I'm more um, frightened by things and more, no, frightened maybe not necessarily, but more emotional, let's say, no? But on the other hand, I want to go more in depth in everything and want to, to, to create also harmony. So I'm thinking that at the moment, this Corona thing gives me the possibility to try to figure out what, what I need to do in my life from now on. So I'm enjoying being here in, on my, my country place, but that's nice. It gives me also energy, but that's not enough. I don't want to end my days just staying here and, and dig in the garden. So I want to take an active role in the world. And I'm sort of happy to come out of the many decades of illusions I had also on our state and on, on the society and to just understand more and hopefully I can be useful. And so I already took a little bit from the next round in this uh, case, but altogether, it's a good year in, in for me because it gives me more <laughs> many emotions and many possibilities to to look into them to 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 watch my own responses and to to develop uh, develop uh, practices how to 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 get me in, in a certain place i think i told you i do the wim hof method of the breathing every day and how i started also the cold showers <laughs> two minutes and and 10 seconds i got today and i started to sing while i do that so <laughs> but you know Actually, at the beginning, it's horrible, but then afterwards you feel well. And I had the tradition of going into sauna and everything, so it's not really not really new. But to do it now regularly, oh, okay. But, you know, I try also to do self-care. And as you said, Monia, that you can uh, move better now. When I think back the last years, the last five years, I had so many problems with my knees, and, and, and things, you know, and I couldn't, uh, had prob problems to go into trousers, to get the leg up and things like that. At uh, your age. Yeah, that is, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's what it is. But now it's not. I'm doing my cycling every day, you know, half an hour. And so, and now I, I, I can put my socks on standing on one foot. And I can go into the uh, into the trousers, uh, lifting up the the legs and everything. And I feel good. And I hope I will continue this way and become old in a good physical way. So this and was that, all sort that of cold shower. Do you start uh, at your ankles and knees and go up, or go? Do you go? I'm going up and down, up and and, and here and there and. <laughs> But it feels good afterwards, so <laughs> I can only recommend that. And this is also because of Corona, because somebody told me this is a, pre a method which is uh, um, uh, eliminating the, the germs and the, the viruses has the power to, to, to get everything away. I don't know if you know Wim Hof, he did scientific studies on, on that. He was injected with some bacteria and he demonstrated by his method in, in, I think in one hour or two hour, that was gone. And so uh, that's thanks to Corona, I started with this. And I think, I do think it helps me in some way also to be more energetic and everything. So I'm grateful. I give over to New York, Beatrice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Um, strangely, despite the fact that this year has been the year that it is and so crazy, I feel like it's also one of my biggest years in my life. Um, and there's a lot to celebrate. Um, so it's a lot has been learned and a lot has been experienced. But there's also a lot to celebrate. I finished my master's degree and part of that was also doing my first uh, installation, you know, full, full installation work, which, you know, I, a year ago, I wouldn't have called myself an installation artist. Um, and I was just beginning to be a video artist and, um, and yeah, and I, I produced this whole thing. Um, I am sad that <laughs> it had a very short life and not very many people got to see it um, because it was only up for one day before the COVID shut down. Um, and it was supposed to have a 10 day run. Um, but it is on video. You can share your, uh, the address and we can see it. I watched it actually, it's nice. Yeah, it is on video um, and and I'm very glad. I don't know, that's one of those things where the timing, I was very frustrated about the timing of COVID and, and felt it was very ironic that I made a space for grief and then right in a moment where we really need a space for grief, it got shut down. Um, but I'm also very grateful that the timing was what it was because you know, I had a friend who was scheduled to have her show right after mine. And I can't imagine being in that position because I I function very well with with external deadlines and and external expectation of me showing up to do a thing, um, and so I and sometimes that you know I pulled an all, the first all nighter that I've pulled in, in in a very long time and the only one, <laughs> but I was I spent all night in the gallery the night before we opened. Um, to finish the project and to finish building everything and to get it all together. And I don't know if I would have pushed myself to finish it if it didn't have a real opening and it did get to have a real opening. And then, so I'm very happy about that because I, I actually got to complete it and, and look at what it was at the end. And now I have something to, you know, eventually if I want to remount it or do something similar, I can actually look at, you know, what did that finished product look like and what changes would I want to make? And I have some distance and some perspective. And um, anyway, I'm very proud of that. Um, and then even after that, I've done so many things. Um, I've, I've met so many new people online through different um, events and programs and uh, workshops and all kinds of things. And I through that got to be in an online show because I, and that was also, you know, none of these things were things that I, I don't know if they would have happened in other contexts. Um, but, you know, I went to an online, uh, it was called ITP camp, which was for uh, people who, the ITP programs at NYU where uh, technologists and artists who are using technology come together for a month in the summer and teach each other what they know and learn together and uh, try to prototype projects and, um, and I, you know, got to do that this year and got to meet people that way. That's how I met the person who, uh, created the show. And I also, because of zoom felt like I had the guts to approach the, you know, the executive director of reimagine, which again, you know, I don't, if, if there'd been in-person events, he would have been a talking head very far away. He's also in San Francisco and not in New York, but they had online events and with online, I feel like you feel more intimate. Um, and so I went to an online event that he was there and he felt approachable. And so I sent him an email and started that relationship, which turned into <laughs> me, uh, producing these events for them. And, um, and now I'm working on starting a nonprofit with our, with our friend, Matt Sullivan, who, uh, he lost his partner in July, um, and wants to create an arts nonprofit in his memory. And, um, and that's a really exciting and huge thing. Anyway, I just, I feel it's, I've done a lot. I've exhausted myself a lot. I think I, I'm kind of jealous of the people who have been able to relax this year and take a break and slow down because I don't think I've slowed down at all. Um, but I'm also really happy to be in a position where everything that I've been doing has been things that I genuinely care about. And 
Um, and I'm finding ways, I mean, you know, right now it's, it's, it's touch and go, but I'm finding ways to also make money doing the things that I care about, which is amazing. Um, and, you know, I'm going to push that further and see how, how, what I can build out of it for next year. But um, I was really worried graduating, especially graduating during a pandemic and job hunting and there are no jobs and everything. So um, yeah. I think it's been it's been an exciting year and um, it's also been a hard year. I mean, as you as you know from from many conversations ago, I, I went back to California for a couple of months. So we had to go through my grandmother's estate and had to come to terms with with that major loss. And that's still an ongoing thing. And um, it's been hard to be apart. I mean, it's hard to be apart right now during the holidays and um, I, I was living with, with my boyfriend here and we broke up and he left. And, um, there's just, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of separations and changes and shifts and kind of re regrouping and refiguring out what, what is important. And, um, so that's been hard, a lot of growth, but also, you know, learning how to take care of myself. And I don't, I don't do it well all the time. <laughs> But I've gotten, I've gotten, I think a little bit better because I've had to be home when I couldn't, you know, just rely on, you know, being able to go out to eat or, or whatever things out in the world that I actually, you know, had to make the space and create boundaries for work versus non-work and to cook and to um, try to get a good sleep schedule. I've, I've gotten very bad in that direction recently. I've been staying up until about 4am and so, but um, yeah, I think all in all, it has been, it's been a really good year and there's a lot to be proud of. And I think I feel a little bit pressure for next year. Um, and I don't know, like I need to live up to all of these things that I've set up for myself now. <laughs> and, and I keep thinking, you know, I've been, I've been curating these events, but I haven't facilitated any of my own. And I think there's a little, it's because of some fear, um, but I totally could facilitate my own event with my own rituals and my own meditations and my own practices. Um, and I've been too scared to try that. And I think that has to be the next step. Um, and really also working on my, like my work and my brand. I've been doing a lot of work for other people that I care about very deeply about, and that's been exciting, but I haven't done as much you know my of my own work besides little little creative projects but I haven't done big creative projects so um I don't know it, it feels <laughs> it feels like 2020 is asking asking a lot and I don't know I don't know if I I should what I should do with that anyway that's it, that's been a lot of words but that's where I am at the moment um I will pass over to my mama <laughs> Um, well, I'm still going to go back to the DNA. I think <laughs> whenever I feel discouraged, I think if, if I didn't achieve anything else in my life, at least I, um, at least I facilitated the bringing into the world of this miraculous being and her name, her name means, um, bringing blessing. And I think from the minute I conceived her, she was already active, even when I was pregnant. Um, and probably you can um, relate to this Heidi being, having lived in Italy for so many years, but the Italians are always so invasive. Like they, <laughs> they want to just jump, <laughs> jump into your life, total strangers and tell you all kinds of things. And um, I was, I was surrounded by elderly Italian women every time I went to Italy when I was pregnant the whole the whole pregnancy who were going to predict the you know what this child was going to be like and um, who wanted to give me advice and they were giving me religious medals um, to protect me and um, all kinds of stuff so um, I knew it was going to be a special child um, so that's my um, Christmas message uh, let's see I yeah, I think that I think the um, 
yeah, definitely the pain of the year was, was in having to um, face in a more concrete way the death of my mother. Um, it's still going on endlessly and it seems like it's going to take centuries to resolve. Um, so the big lesson I've learned from that and I think from other experiences this year is to let go. And, um, and I'm starting to feel like letting go is the whole purpose of life anyway. And it, I don't really understand why we have to have anything in the first place that <laughs> we have to let go. It seems like it'd be easier just to fly around in the ether and, and be um, beings without form and substance. But um, it's been an interesting year spiritually because I have been, the pandemic cut me off from all my usual spiritual anchors. And, um, and so I took the opportunity to, to, to plunge into, into different, um, different traditions and, um, and it's, it's just really like going down the rabbit hole. Every, every, it's still happening now. It's the most amazing experience. Um, every time I do one thing, all of a sudden I meet more people and then those people, um, you know, we start, we start communicating outside of the events. And so um, it, it's really quite miraculous. And I was just, just this morning, I, a woman that I met last week at a three-day retreat um, online sent me this, this beautiful poem um, that she wrote. She said she was just, you know, thinking of me and she wanted to send me a solstice blessing. And um, I just, I just think I'm surrounded by miracles because, um, and it's a miracle to have met all of you. And, um, you know, just starting with Heidi and, you know, that big sand conference where we met in May was, was, um, was huge. I mean, there were hundreds of people that attended that and how we managed to connect. And, and this, now this is my new family, all of you women. And um, to me, that's so miraculous. I can't, I still can't sort of believe it. And I have a friend here who's very um, possessive and, and um, she could be a real pain, um, but she's, she's a beautiful person and very generous. Um, uh, but she every now and then leaves a nasty voicemail on my phone and says, um, I want you to call me, Victoria. You're always on Zoom with complete strangers. And I have to tell her, I'm not on Zoom with complete strangers. I, these, these are my friends and I love you too. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, I'm not neglecting you, you know, and, and doing something abstract. You know, it's, it's, I, this is the new world that we're in. And so... Um, and I think, you know, also the ramifications of that professionally have been really interesting because um, for the first time um, in my career, I've been able to share my professional work with colleagues in Europe and um, on the East Coast and um, Australia and all kinds of places because of Zoom. And that never happened before. I. Um, I have, you know, close friends and colleagues all over the world. And in the past, you know, they, they would, when they get my announcements, they would just say, um, you know, good luck, wish I could be there. And now some of them can be there. So um, I think the most touching was that my, my, uh, my former roommate from Harvard, who has uh, um, MS and she, uh, multiple sclerosis, and she can't, move at all and she really can't talk anymore either i mean she's just now she's just basically a a mind um anyway she she's like totally gung home now um she's she's acting the way she acted when we were students at harvard because now um for the first time she was able to actually witness um some of my lectures and she's spreading the news to our you know our harvard classmates and things and it's just very touching to me because it's, um, yeah, so it's so it just, I, I'm really grateful for sort of what I consider the miracles. I mean, of course there's, there are tragedies and, um, but, I, but I want to embrace the positive things about this year. And um, I, I have done a lot, a great deal of grieving this year too, but 
I feel like in order to move on, it's, it's like what Beatrice is doing, that to transform the grief and the loss and the sorrows into um, healing and something positive for, um, to sort of usher us into a new era, which, um, yeah, and today apparently is the day. Um, last night at an Eckhart Tolle thing, everybody was writing in the chat that we had to all be outside at 10 a.m. Eastern time and touch the earth and pray for its healing. <laughs> But that was 7 a.m. here. And as you saw, I barely got into this meeting. So um, I hope the earth will heal with or without my touch. <laughs> and um, I look forward to seeing the, the meeting of the planets tonight, um, with the weather permitting. Um, that's kind of exciting. So yeah, I think we're, we're standing on the threshold of something auspicious. But I feel like for me, in all of my explorations and, and you know at the end of the day my spiritual search is is central to everything more important than anything else I, I think um, this has been a really fruitful exciting year and I feel like I can take a lot of gifts from this year into the future and and reach out to other people so I'm I'm actually feeling really energized and encouraged and part of that is having this community so that's um I think I'm talking too much. So that that might be like my check in, check out, um, <laughs> check forward, whatever. <laughs> so I love all of you, and I want to thank you all. And um, I, this has been a, a beautiful um, experience to join this community, and I look forward to next year continuing. I think Anneli, you are still left. <laughs> First of all, I really want to celebrate the feeling I have in my heart right now, being here with all you women. You've been part of my backbone this year. Thank you, Heidi, for finding me earlier in the year and the ability to be here with you every second week, especially during my mom's passing, which is five months today. So it's a very interesting day. There's lots of joy and there's also a feeling her at this moment around me, her presence. And I feel really in all my cells right now as I'm saying that. But you have been this feeling in my heart and my ability to share my sensations and kinesthetic awareness has been growing so much this year, developing in other uh, groups that I've been involved in, in co-creations, which is for me a true blessing. So thank you all for that. I want to celebrate that particularly. And for me, it was also an incredibly active year. I've been co-creating more than 50 sessions with people online this year, and have been involved in more than 58. And the gift that I received from this also was my social bubble just exploded. And the synchronicities was, have been incredible. Things that I could, people that I've met that I don't think otherwise I would have met. So I'm deeply grateful for that. And also the ability to allow others to be who they are and to really work on that in myself and not to judge their experiences or their expectations of mine, especially when my mom passed. So that for me is a big gift that I'm taking forth into the future and into the new year. And also something that was completely new to me, a huge surprise in the last two months was the ability to say no, which I really struggled with before. And saying no gave me so much power in my body. I just felt it everywhere. And so a new sense of integrity is arising for me, of your congruency on some level. And now I feel the heart, so I'm saying that to you. And I'm really deeply grateful for all these people from all over the world who participated in our co-creations and just brought so much joy. And in the latter part, I begin, began to realize that it's not so much about the giving, it's about what I received in the process, although we were facilitating these sessions. So I'm deeply grateful for that. And first of all, as well, I'm deeply, deeply grateful for life itself. And... 
with whatever is busy emerging, I do feel there is something new coming on many, many different levels. And for my own life's work, um, so much rejuvenation happened this year with the joy generation, expansion. No wonder Jupiter is meeting Saturn. Lots and lots of expansion, but a, de a deeper depth and intensity as well at the same time. But yet it's calm and at peace in my heart. And I'm really looking forward to the new babies that are going to be born in the new year of, of all of us. So many seeds were planted this year and just the ability to nourish them, even through turbulent times and just to be there for others as well. Because you see so much to be grateful for and to celebrate that I think it overshadows all the pain, anxiety, and overwhelm that so many experience uncertainty. And I think that's enough for now. Thank you. I'm complete. Yeah, thank you. So we, what I'm hearing is that we are, all have a whole lot of things to celebrate, and we are doing that, and that's really great. We have done more than an hour, so I would recommend to celebrate Christmas time as well as we can and, and uh, come together next year and talk about what we plan or what we think next year would be for us instead of hanging it on just now. What do you think? Just make a short um, check out round and I can say that I'm really super grateful that you are here for this group, but also for the German speaking groups, because for me, that's, you are my friends, you know, that's, uh, I don't have friends like this here around. So I always happy when, when I see your faces, <laughs> very grateful for that. So I would go from left to right. Uh, and I start with Monia for the checkout. Well, before I check out, I have to talk to Christine because something she said really got in resonance with me. A couple of nights ago, I was wondering about uh, Catholic dogmas. And if you remember, uh, Maria, or Mar yeah, Maria, she received through the ear. She conceived through the ear. She heard the message the angel gave to her. So she conceived through the ear. And she gave birth to the Logos, which is comes out of her mouth, actually. Uh, this just, uh, well, when you said that, all of a sudden it, it really fit together. And maybe we could, uh, next year, we could talk about uh, what the Logos metaphysical it means to us not in the catholic uh, sense but as such what is the logos and when while we are here talking we are giving birth to the logos as well so that's my checkout <laughs> thank you and i can add what i forgot but it is in german i did an interview with two integral um german um Luth lutheran um how do you say pastors, priests, or something? And uh, you find it on the wisdomfactory.net. Uh, uh, yeah, under uh, Weihnachten, if you speak German. If you don't speak German, you maybe. I wrote also a little text, but this is not as informative as what they are saying. So I invite you to, to check that out because it's always interesting. The, I learned a lot by listening to them, because they definitely know the Bible, and I don't. And they have the possibility to, to find different aspects, you know. We think that the baby was born, you know, from the Virgin Mary, but that's not really the thing, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> just an invitation to, to, if you speak German, to watch that. Okay, I give over to who, who wants. <laughs> Uh, Hanili is next to me on my screen, so <laughs> why don't you? Well, thank you so much for, for this culmination of this year of us coming together in this way. And 
the beingness part for me is what comes up as I sense into what it is that I feel that we're coming more towards. And Monia, yes, you speak of logos. It is in that beingness that I've in the feeling part of it that I think it's not just the mentalization or the concepts anymore. It's the being part that's emerging for all of us, which will impact our the way we relate and act on everything else. So thank you for that, ladies. Love you lots. And I pass on to Beatrice. I'm so grateful to have uh, met this group <laughs> and, and just have spent the last few months getting to know all of you and sharing with you and um, learning your wisdom. And um, maybe next year I will have the courage to show up for the German group. <laughs> Um, that could be maybe a goal for next year is to work on my languages, um, that I have neglected for many years. Um, yeah, thank you. I think, I think my checkout is a big thank you to all of you. And I'm so, so happy to be here and to have been brought in and, um, yeah, I am going to pass on to Christine. Thank you, Beatrice. Um, yeah, I also feel very appreciative of all of you have learned from each one of you and been inspired. Um, I love having artists in the group. It, it is very inspiring to me to have that. Um, I think uh, I've been thinking of the Leonard Cohen uh, quote that is so popular, it's almost become a cliche about uh, everything has a crack and that's where the light gets in. And thinking about that and going from our pre-COVID world, which we sometimes think of fondly, <laughs> and now we're in this disorder, that was order, now we're in disorder and a little bit of chaos, and we will go to reordering things. And it is kind of exciting to think about what that reordering may look like uh, hopefully taking some positive things and some positive lessons forward. And, and for myself, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to doing that and not bouncing back to how everything used to be, but hopefully going forward in a, in a slightly transformed and different way. So um, I'm hopeful about the new year. Uh, I know it's not gonna change in a matter of a few hours, it's gonna be weeks and months uh, of that happening, but I am optimistic. So I appreciate you all. Thank you all for showing up uh, for this forum. Thank you. And Gertrude. Yeah. Since I was the first, I forgot so many things like the intercool conference, which went from 400 people in Hungary to thousands, more than 1,000 people uh, from the whole planet. Or, um, yeah, this group and the, the co facilitating <laughs> that we started and uh, me doing it with Hanali was just pure joy and um, yeah all those those wonderful things that happen and and there is also something like life is precious before we took it for granted and there is so much gratitude for yeah being well having being able to, to, yeah, to, to rearrange our lives in a way that that's healthy for us. And what you said, Christine, I think um, it needs to be rearranged because the old, old model wasn't working anymore and maybe never <laughs> really. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and, and I'm, at the moment, I'm so much learning, uh, like um, nutrition. There's a, the book, uh, Food Fix uh, Guide, 
yeah, how, how to eat healthy and and heal the planet <laughs> in this, at the same time, or or the the what's called the circle of eight from Lil, Lynn McTaggart. Uh, just amazing things, amazing people out there, and and to meet them and. And one of those amazing people <laughs> circle is is here, and I can't believe that we're doing it for four years now, aren't we? Yeah. And thank you so much, Heidi, for providing that space and be there constantly, all the time, and and really providing us with. Yeah. And I'm very proud that we got that idea. <laughs> <laughs> in our last session with unity and diversity yeah so thanks a lot and um have wonderful wonderful celebration wherever with whomever even alone uh just have a wonderful time and a healing time as well Victoria, I pass on to you. Are you frozen, Victoria? Or are you there? Oh, did you pass on to me? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just <laughs> reading what Christine wrote to Beatrice. Um, that, yeah, Beatrice, you might since there's the event on Wednesday, um, that, that's coming up in two days. So you might want to send Christine the um, information for that. Um, yeah, I feel like I already used up all my check-in, check-out <laughs> narration time. But um, just to reiterate, I think, um, yeah, the gratitude, I think, is, uh, is the word of the day. And I in that sense, I'm, I, it's, again, for me, it's a kind of miracle because I've, I feel like I've been through so much suffering in the past years that uh, it was hard for me to be grateful. I felt a lot of bitterness and resentment and uh, despair. And um, so I feel like kind of a phoenix rising out of the ashes and, and I'm very grateful to all of you for contributing to that. Um, so keep that fire burning, Heidi. <laughs> and I really look forward to um, to your accompaniment next year into the into the new year. It, it gives me courage and confidence, and uh, I love all of you. So, as be as uh, <laughs> someone that does online, <laughs> it's a very loud kiss. <laughs> Yeah, wonderful. I have a, a, a task for the artists uh, among us, the phoenix who is coming out of the ashes. I found it very inspiring. Uh, so maybe you find the possibility to do that. I am not a good artist, so I won't do that, but I'm looking forward to see something like that. You, Monia has a candle. I wish you all the very best which can be in these days. Oh, advanced grants. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> and stay well, be happy, be as well as possible. Okay. And we see you again next year. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>